So as promised, here's the next video. So we before we talk about transposons, we want to highlight the fact that prokaryotes and eukaryotes, eukaryotes have mobile genetic elements in their genetic information, and these are called transposons. So transposons, so even though eukaryotes, uh, eukaryotic transposons are, are considered to be old defects of, of retroviruses, uh, they still have the genetic mobility. They can move around. So a, sh a short segment of sequences can can basically jump around from from one one spot on the on the chromosome to a next spot. And, the, and these changes and and these transposons can can cause other kinds of mutations discussed, such as inversions and and um, and deletion and, and, and frame shifts essentially. So, so what, what is the mechanism behind transposons? And before we get to the mechanism, we want to know what a transposon is by itself. So, so transposons are mobile genetic elements, and the, they have the ability to move around. And we want to talk about the two classes of transposons. So we have a retro, retro transposon, excuse me, a retro transposon, which basically, ha which basically functions in the manner that the are the, so we have we have the let's say that we have the the transposon gene sitting over here and this transposon gene will be will be transcribed will be transcribed and then translated to DNA and then this DNA can go insert itself in different areas or on the same or on the same chromosome we don't know where it's going but the point is it's it's jumping around in the sense the only difference is that it's being trans transcribed and then translated but the the original uh transposon will be sitting and and just uh sitting on the same spot that's a retro transposon remember that retro just refers to the fact that uh, the the fact that rna is going to dna so we have retroviruses retro transcription and retro is always referring to the rna to dna just remember that and then we have a second kind and then a, a second class of transposons, and these transposons just basically have have the ability of of translating and trans sorry transcribing and then translating a gene that cuts and pastes them in different sp in spots. And let, let's quickly talk about the transposon gene. The transposon gene is located inside the transposon, obviously, and this and this transposon gene or the sequence for the gene the gene that is required to translate it eventually is located on the transposon. So if you look at the transposon, this is how it looks like it. It's flanked by inverted repeat sequences. And what flanked really just means is that it's kind of wrote, it's kind of flipped around. And let's look at that for real, real quickly. So this is a transposon. We have, let, look, look at these bases over here. We have a, let's look at, let's look at the end first. We have a guanine, right? So we look, look at that. We have, we have adenine, thymine, thymine, cytosine, thymine, guanine, guanine, and it's inverted and it's flanked. And, and this just means that if we just look over here, we have a guanine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, thymine, thymine, adenine. It's just inverted. And then we the same thing applies to the other uh, complementary uh, sequences. So cytosine, cytosine, adenine, guanine, blah, 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 blah. We don't care. And then cytosine, cytosine, adenine, guanine, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. So the same thing is happening on the other side. There are three kinds of transposons, and let's talk about that real fast. So we have an IS element, and the IS element is just a basic transposon. And remember that transposons contain the gene for the transposes, transposes which is the, the gene that cuts the, the, the transposon off. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And these are the inverted sequences. This is just a simple transposon. And we have a complex transposon. Trans uh, excuse me, complex transposons are transposons with genes on the, trans uh, on the transposon uh, sequences. And, and, and if we have the ability of these transposons to jump around from one part of the chromosome to the next is kind of related to plasmids because plasmids are, are essentially when prokaryotes are are exchanging genetic information from, from one another. It's very similar in that sense. Not because we have a new uh, new genome coming from a different organism, because because of the because of the characteristics that's allowing different parts of the chromosome to 
be expressing new genes now and and this is really this is really happening because of transposons because they're jumping around and when transposons have genes on them let's say you have a gene a and gene b it could be anything it's a complex transposon it has the ability to to take these two genes they could be any they could be they, they could be for any reason we don't know what it could be anything and and these complex transposons will take these two genes to a different location it could take it from from okay this is an example we we're going to talk about in a second if it takes if it takes let's say that this is not a comp this is not a complex transposon but let's say that this is a complex transposon it's going to take this information from chromosome chromosome let's call this chromosome whoop let me get my color whoops chromosome well this is not what i'm looking for i'm looking for orange is my favorite color chromosome uh, seven right let's say that this is on chromosome seven it's going to jump off and go to chromosome five we're going to talk about that mechanism in a second so the point is that this this these genes are now being jumped off from from one place to another that's that's the entire 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 idea behind transposons and then we have a composite transposon composite transposons have have two identical is elements that are that are you know with a central region and this really is interesting in the sense that they they have two possibilities and the this transposon has a direction either it's point it's going uh, it's going upstream or downstream and uh, well we, we can just say we, we, we i'm not going to say i take that back it's going in in either this direction or in that direction well, the point being, we, we're going to get this, get to this in a second, but the point is these directions are going to have an impact on how these transposons behave, in a sense, when it comes to jumping around. So let's talk about the overall mechanism of how transposons jump around. So what is the mechanism used by transposons to jump around? So the first thing that happens is transcription and translation of what, you might be asking. The transposes gene. The transposes gene is really just a gene that helps the production of the transposes. And the transposes will cut off the transposon. And, the, and, and let's really quickly look at this ASE. Whenever you, say, whenever you see ASE, it just refers to a gene, sorry, an enzyme. An enzyme, it could be lactase, you know, like anything that has an ASE at the end is an enzyme. So this transposa transposes excuse me gene is is going to translate transcribe and then trans yeah sorry translate well transcribe and then trans translate the transposon and this is this is this can be compared by an analogy to a scissors because this is going to cut off the transposons and this is on chromosome 7 so okay we have the transposes now being 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 copied off and they can they can cut off the two ends and when this when these two ends are cut off with the inverted repeat sequences it can be jumped around to the next location and as this is being located to the next part of course it has to be it has to be mediated by the transposes cuz cuz think about it it was cut off you know there are certain ends of it that that that, that just need that can't be binding to everything it sees in the, in the way because our metabolisms and our, our genetic information is has a lot a lot of, of of information and a lot of a lot of dna around it so so it's mediated by the transposes so as this is being mobilized to the new site from the donor site and the donor site is the original spot of the of the of the transposon so let's say this chromosome on this chrom this this transposon from chrom chromosome four can jump on to chromosome five, and when this happens, the transposon transposes will again again help the transposon. You know, settle down its new on its new site. Now here's a question to a brainstorming question: What impact can a transposon have on gene expression and gene expression is the it can either be silent or it's being expressed it's it's really just reference to what parts or what nucleotides or what sequences in our bodies are being transcribed and then translated and 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 this can have a serious impact on on it sometimes it depends so let's talk about the the, the kind of possibilities of 
transposons. Let's say that the transposon jumps onto a non-coding area of, the, of, the, of our genes, an area that's <clears throat> that's really just being repeated. It's just there. We don't really know the exact purpose behind it, but it's not being translated or transcribed. So really nothing really happens. It's just jumped around and, and there's no serious consequence of it because we're still living and talking and everything is fine. And then there's another possibility that this transposon jumps onto a sequence of the <clears throat> DNA that contains the pro promoter, the promoter sequence. The promoter sequence is a sequence that initiates transcription. It, it, it just hints the entire entire structure is needed for it, or the enzymes needed for it. It tells the, the, the enzymes, oh, this is the start point. This is where we start transcribing. <clears throat> Excuse me. This promoter is now, is now affected by the transposon. Gene expression is turned off. And we have another last part. Let's say that this transposon successfully reaches and it kind of it kind of integrates with the with with a coding, MR, well coding strand, and this 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 strand now will be transcribed and translated. And and, and when it's when it's being transcribed, it's obviously in the middle of the if it's in the, if it's in the body of the of the of the of the message, it's going to be synthesized, obviously. And when that happens, there's protein sequences being disrupted and that's pretty all common sense now obviously if it made it through then it's going to have its impacts on it <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me i just have a just have a little uh back problems today. just my, my back hurts i don't know why anyhow so transposons have directionality they can be either parallel or anti-parallel and we talked about this briefly in a sense so so this is what i mean by that so if it's parallel, then it's going off in the same direction. And so is the central region as well. It's just going off in the same direction. We're talking about the transposons. And if it's going in the same direction, they have to align to another. And 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 now imagine this this part, this 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 part over here is trying to align with this part. And the only only way that can happen is let's say if we flip this and and, and that's the this is the best way of doing it. If it flips it around just like that, then it's gonna be it's gonna be going off in opposite direction. So it has to kind of over overlap and and go at the bottom and and it, it really looks just looks like this. So they align to one another and and recombination happens between the two transposons and and then and then when this occurs, there's information being changed off and 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 then we have something called we have two we have this we have a we have the intermediate gene going off with one transposon and then one of the transposons is left on to make an is element <laughs> let's, let's talk about i know i said a lot i'm just trying to say less and show more at this point but what happens is we have this this one uh transposon with the intermediate gene with the central part of the of the of the uh well of the composite transposon being being translocated now it's, it's going off in it on a different chromosome it's going to jump around it's going to go to a new site so this method here can cause deletion and rearrangement of chromosomes so this information now is all lost if it's important then guess what we're gonna to have to pay the consequences if it's not important then thank you god say to our ass again so what happens to dna seg so what happens to the dna segment segment that, that that's integra integrated with the transposon excuse me so here's what what happens so well we just I'm, 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 that's different well what happens i just said it beforehand it's just going to go off to a new site and just bind over there it's going to it's going to travel from the donor side to the new site so what happens when the directionality of the transposon is in opposite directions so if it's going in different directions then Look what's going to happen. It's going to cause. It's going to cause the so recombination is going to cause inversion of the DNA segment between the transposon. It's just going to cause the central region's direction to switch around, and this is what I mean by that. So they're trying to align again, so that so so recombination can happen, and that's that's always the 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 end goal. So just remember that they are trying to align to another, so recombination can happen, and and because they're in the same, it's because we can just flip it around just like that. It's pretty easy, and and because of that, the the directionality of the central region will now. So, what aspects of our bodies will are are designed to protect us against mutations, such as those caused by transposons? So we know transposons are just 
or, or mobile genetic elements or bodies that can jump around. So what is protecting us against this? And it's pretty serious as we as we, we, we discussed before. So let's recognize the fact that humans are diploid organisms. And what that means is that we have a copy of a chromosome in our bodies for pretty much every chromosome. And because of this, we have something called zygos- we have something called zygosity. Zygosity is the degree of genetic similarity between two homologous chromosomes. So chromosome 21 in comparison to chromosome 21 is going to be similar and and the similarity is is going to be called zygosity. So we have two terms to memorize. We have heterozygosity, which is when we have both chromosomes we have which has the functional gene on it. It's, it's all fine. It's doing a great job like our president, you know, in the White House. Great job. So <laughs> <laughs> didn't say that, did I? Oh, no, I didn't. So heterozygosity is, is uh, I've just talked about that, is when both chromosomes are have a functional gene. And then we have hemozygosity is when we have one gene, one copy of a gene in a diploid organism. And this is when the organism is more vulnerable to mutation because it doesn't have a backup to go to and, and, and locate the original sequence of the, of the gene. An example of this is when we have something called... Uh, Hereditary written, uh, I can't say this word. Yes, you can. It's called uh, hereditary retinoblastoma. It's caused by the suppression of the RB1 gene from one parent, and the loss of heterozygosity will lead to the formation of of, of abnormal uh, or non functional RB proteins, which will cause the child to. to develop retinoblastoma so that's just one example of of the effect of mutations and this is going to bring us to our next video the effects of mutations so so just search it up and uh, hopefully you understand everything you need to know